Welcome to Level Up. Today I would like to show you some animation tricks. This whole animation was made in PowerPoint with moving background, rotations, transitions, and very important motion paths. That's actually the part that we will focus on today. Motion paths. We will start with basic options and then move to more advanced functions. Today I would like to show you more closely how this slide was made. Then we will move to motion path part. If you want to go straight to it, just click the link below. First, to see all animations that we have on a slide, we are going to go to the animation tab. And then everything is visible. It looks messy, I know, but don't worry, I will explain everything step by step. Let's open Animation Paint to see all of those animations in a little bit more organized way. Here we can see the number on the left side of the animation and it's matching the number close to the object on the slide. Let me also open our Selection Pane. Go to Home tab, Select and Selection Pane. I changed the name of each object so it's easier to match it with animation. I will select a rocket and you see how the animation that is applied to that object is highlighted in this panel. Additionally, we can see the motion path, this arc, that's the path that my rocket will follow. I wanted it to fly behind the moon. Let's see the preview of it. That was fast. Uh, what are the other animation in the paint? You can see that all of those are stars animations, which are actually just circles. To get a blinking effect, I applied Dark and Emphasize animation. And to make them go on and on and on, I changed something in Effect Options. Let's check it out. Right click and Effect Options. Here we have all advanced options for the selected effect. In Timing tab, in Repeat Dropdown list, I selected Until End of a Slide for all those stars. To get more natural effect, I modified the delay time a little. So then they will start blinking in a little bit different time. Next animation was applied to the bigger rocket. I made it much bigger because it's closer to us and it's on top of the moon. Here we have apply the arc motion path and additional spin effect. That I will explain step by step later. The last animation is applied to this falling star, which is actually the stretched circle. It's a simple motion path with no smooth start or end that you can set up in effect options. But make sure that the animation path is perfectly aligned with the object. Now when you know exactly what is happening on the screen, let's see it one more time. We have stars in the background and rocket going behind and in front of the moon and then the falling star. As you can see, I used a lot of motion paths and that's an animation that I want to focus on today. I will present you some tricks on three different levels. So it depends how advanced you are in PowerPoint, you can select the one that works better for you. Spinning effect. That's what we want to achieve. Let's start with this basic rotation. First select the rocket, go to animation tab and click add animation, then scroll to the bottom and select motion path shapes. Let's stretch it a little bit so then it will make the whole circle nice. To see the preview of the animation, click on this star icon. It's not perfect yet. Select the rocket, go to add animation and then we want to add spin. So the tip of the rocket will follow perfectly our shape. To apply more than one animation to the same object, always use Add Animation button. If you just select one from the gallery, it would override all previously applied animations. I will open Animation Pane so we have a path, we have a spin. Make sure that the spin animation happens with previous. Now it's time to check it out. Should be good, right? Ooh. So something is not correct. Let me give you a hint. Let's right click on the first animation and go to effect options. And then here we have to make sure that the smooth in and out is zero. Okay. Select the rocket. Preview. Nice. Now it works perfectly. 
So with those small tricks and changes, you can achieve a really good effect. Next level would be to make an animation so our rocket will fly in loops. Okay, how it is done? Similar thing. First, we will go 180 degrees counterclockwise, then additional animation to go 360, and back to original position 180 again. Nice, let's do it together. I have a rocket pointing down, then go to add animation, select animation path and loops. Stretch it, adjust it so then the size would work well. To stretch it from both sides, at the same time, hold control on your keyboard. Then I will change the duration of this animation to 8 seconds. And then go to effect options and remember, make sure those two zippers are set up to zero. Next step, I would like my rocket to rotate, so go to add animation button and select spin. We have to modify a little bit. To set up timing and in which direction you would like our rocket to spin, you can right click on the animation and go to effect options. But you can also set it up here under effect options button. So I will use that option now. I click on it and select counterclockwise and half spin. I will leave duration to 2 seconds and change to start with previous. Now we have to add another animation. Click add animation button and select spin. This time I will leave it as it is because we want it clockwise and 360. I will select it with previous because all animations have to be played with our motion path. And delay 2 seconds. I want to change duration to 4 seconds because we have the full spin, so we need it to be double. Okay, let's add one more. Go to add animation and spin. In effect options, I will select counterclockwise and half spin. Change to start with previous. Duration 2 seconds and delay 6 seconds because that's the sum of the duration of two previous animations. Let's check it out. I'll click once. It looks really nice, right? You can combine spin and motion paths to create your custom animations and get a really good result. The next step would be repeating this animation and looping it on the slide. As long as our animation is simple, it's not that complicated. We can just right click on the animation, select timing, and here change repeat to until end of slide. However, for our three emphasis animations, it would not work well because after setting an animation to loop, we cannot define a pause between each movement. So all animations will be looped in its own time which would just cause confusion. We will use audio bookmark. It's pretty easy, just follow my steps. Go to Insert tab, then Audio, and select Record Audio. Press Record button and wait 8 seconds or more, because it needs to be as long as our whole animation. Ok, next, click on the new audio and go to Playback tab. From the drop-down list, select Start Automatically. Also check loop until stopped and hide during the show. There is one more thing we have to check. Make sure that the volume button is set up to mute. Because even though we didn't record any voice, we don't want to have any noise in the background. Now let's trim our audio to be exactly 8 seconds long. Just type 8 and done. Make sure that now you're at the beginning of the clip and then click Add Bookmark button. This yellow circle will pop up. Great, I'll just move it up a little bit. Time to set up our animations. Select All Animations except the Audio button, then go to Animations tab, Trigger on Bookmark and Bookmark 1. So how does it actually work? We place the bookmark at the beginning of the 8 second audio file. Every time it starts, it automatically triggers our animations. So instead of looping the animation, we loop the audio file. 
Let's check it out. I will open our slideshow view. If I click once and the animation starts, it will make the whole loop and it will start again. Perfect. I didn't have to click again. So our animations will go till we move to the next slide. Using bookmarks is great, but it also has some limitations. When we tested out and placed more than one audio bookmark on the slide, all animations were playing at the same time. So we couldn't really put them in the sequence and set up when which bookmark will start. However, it worked for that one, so you can try to combine it and just push PowerPoint to its limits. And hopefully, if you find any solution, let us know, we'll be happy to hear about that. That's all for today, but if you would like to know more about animations in PowerPoint, just let us know. See you next time!